Autodesk Inventor can import and translate nearly any major CAD file and neutral file source. But Inventor has another very powerful way of working with non-native data. Placing a file into the assembly, you can switch the file type to another CAD system. Select that file and click Open. You have the option to convert the model, but instead, we need to create a part for the assembly that is based on a part that will still be maintained in the other CAD system. So for this, we'll use Reference Model. Clicking OK, it will link this component into the assembly. I'll place it grounded at the origin. And now I can begin a new component to model off of it. I can use the data from the linked file for anything that I need, including defining a work plane to begin a sketch on. I can start my sketch and I can project the cut edges of the model into the sketch. Completing the profile, I can extrude just like I'd projected edges from any native inventor data. If I have any existing inventor data, I also have the ability to export it to a number of formats. Under the file pullout, I can share it with others as a view. I can export to any other CAD system, export CAD format. I can choose what CAD system I want to export to or neutral file format. After choosing a system, I simply save the file to the name that I want. Now I want to create a new project. This new assembly will be used to begin the design of a safety rail to go in a pump room. To understand what size the safety rail needs to be, I'll go to the Manage tab and select a point cloud using Attach. Point cloud data can be RCP data or RCS data. Both can be exported from Recap. I'll open the pump room RCP file and I can see roughly what the file looks like. A click to locate it, move it to the origin, and then let's rotate this slightly. We'll try 22 degrees. We can vary the density of the points themselves to try to make them thin or thick. This is a fairly thin point cloud, so I'll keep the density high, and I'll also keep the number of points. Clicking OK, this will place the points in my assembly. Now, I want to be able to take a closer look at the design, so I'll rearrange my front view and use orthographic faces. In the Point Cloud tools, I'll use Box Crop to rough in a window around the area that I want to keep in my design while I'm developing my rail. I'll rough in the location and the size and click OK when I'm done. This is more important with the high density point cloud, but it can also be useful to improve view clarity. Next, I want to be able to reference the point cloud to start creating my design. So I'll select a cloud plane, hover over a collection of points, and it will develop a work plane based on those points. Now I can go to the Assemble tab, create my new part, and we'll start a sketch based on this work plane. We'll set the current view as the front view. Now, simply using lines to rough this in, I know I need my rail to be 42 inches high. It looks like we'll be able to make it about 4 feet wide, so I'll just rough that dimension in. And let's bring it back down. We'll restart line and just roughly place it in the assembly. We'll finish the sketch and take a look at how it appears. 
This looks like it will probably fit just fine. We'll return back to the top level of the assembly and go to the design tab and begin developing our design for our rail. Select the insert frame tool from the frame panel on the design tab to begin using the frame generator. I'll select the member size that I want to use and just quickly place the roughed members. When I'm done, I can return back to the Manage tab, go to the box crop, and uncrop the point cloud to help others understand what we'll be working on. 